of the annual war between these two clubs for the Atlantic Division Championship. First of all, the most important thing, the physical condition bill of, of Robert Parrish, Rick Roby, ML Carr. How are they doing? Will they play? They'll all be dressed, and uh, I've just come out of the locker room, and they're, they're not going to be out here. ML worked out earlier, and I would say he's the closest to being 100%. And uh, he's worked like 48 hours. I don't know if he slept uh, 48 hours trying to get uh, full use of his leg. And uh, Roby, I would say, not as ready as maybe Parrish. And neither one of them are, are the way we'd like to have them going against the guy they got to right. go against. But uh, we'll have them all in uniform. So can we expect to see perhaps a lot of Mikhail at center tonight? I hope not. Right. I hope not. I hope uh, we can uh, maintain uh, a little bit more semblance of what we've been doing. But that's a possibility. And, if we do do it, uh, I'm sure Kevin will do an excellent job. Bill, what about the 76ers, the way they're playing right now? You're 16 and four, they're 17 and three, but they're playing exceptionally well, aren't they? Yeah, I think somewhere during that 16 and four, we were at the top of our game during that eight game streak, and they're at the top of their game right now. For instance, they're a hotter 17 and three than we are at 16 and four, but you can turn that around in just one ball game, and that's what we're here to do tonight. With the Celtics 76 er matchup. They beat you the first time in double overtime in Philly in a great basketball game. Obviously, this kind of a matchup makes it easy. You don't have to come up with as big a tough of pep speech, do you, before the game? No, I, I don't. I don't very. I very seldom make a pep speech speech to this ball club. Anyhow, they don't need it. We just go in and say, "Okay, go get them." All right, that's good enough. Go get them. Thank you. All right, we're back with the opening tap right after this. And good evening, everyone. From the Garden, the Celtics and 76ers, Gil Santos and Bob Cousy here. The crowd filing into the Garden. It's going to be a hot live crowd tonight for this one, Cousy. It always is. Uh, the expression is bond burner, I guess. It's already been overused, but I think well applied here because uh, these two teams are about as evenly matched as any two in the NBA this year. And earlier in the season, we played the Sixers in Philadelphia. A double overtime loss there, 119 to 115. That was a great game. Uh, and uh, I we expect the very same thing tonight. However, tonight, the Celtics do have some problems, Robert. Robert Parrish has the, uh, the bad ankle. Rick Roby has back spasms. They may not be able to use either one of them all that much at center against Malone. What are your thoughts on that? You know, this is going to sound strange, but again, predicated on how hampered they are. Mm -hmm. In other words, if uh, this is a decision, obviously, the coach has to make. But if we're talking 60, 70 percent, I think perhaps the Celtics might be better served not to use the players at all the injured players simply to establish frankly more of a challenge in the minds of the remaining players uh, as opposed to letting them play at less than 100 percent if we're talking at 80 percent efficiency then you can't keep a Robert Parrish or Rick Roby out of the lineup but uh, I, I say I'm assuming the players themselves know about you know how well they can go and uh, how much pain or discomfort yeah. they're in but I I think it's amazing over the years how you notice teams that lose key players, how they respond, especially at home, yes. in an emotional atmosphere. But the challenge must be presented. And if they feel that these guys are available for spot duty, I don't think they they uh, kind of dig in emotionally uh, the way they might if they feel, hey, we've got to do it ourselves. What about the way the Sixers have been playing? I mean, they're, they're playing, obviously, at the top of their game. Uh, they defeated the Lakers in Los Angeles by 10, which frankly surprised me uh, that they were able to win so comfortably there. And you look at their statistics, they're averaging 117 points per game. You see the Celtics starting lineup being introduced. The starting lineup, by the way, will be uh, Julius Irving and Mark Ivoroni at the forwards for Philadelphia. Moses Malone in the middle, Mo Cheeks and Andrew Tony the guards. For the Celtics, Bird and Maxwell up front, Parrish in the middle, Archibald and Ainge at uh, the guard positions. We're going to uh, uh, check with the uh, Ray Perry, now, is, is he starting Ainge or Buckner? I just missed them as they I run up the floor. Buckner is it going to be Buckner Ainge. again? Yes. Okay, Buckner and Ainge instead of uh, Archibald and Ainge. There are officials for this evening's game. Jim Capers on your left, Wally Rooney on the right. And right now, our national anthem.
righty. Uh, once again, the Celtics, Bird, Maxwell, Parrish, Buckner, and Ainge for the Sixers. Irving, Ivoroni, Malone, Cheeks, and Tony. But the Sixers, Robert, 117 points per game. They're outscoring their opposition by 13 per game on an average. They're 17 and 3. Their overall shooting percentage for the season, 52 percent. They're averaging the league, by the 50 way. The 52 percent is, uh, is better than any team in the league. So I think it reflects that they're generating better shots on their fast break, primarily because of their defensive board control, which they didn't have last year. Dawkins would give it to them occasionally. Malone is giving giving it to them consistently. They're turning over better shots on the other end. Plus, he gives them an inside threat, consistent inside threat they didn't have before. Also, better shot selection and easier shots. And you've got uh, the league leading field goal percentage. And the rebounds. They're averaging 50 a game. That's uh, eight more than their opposition. The Celtics averaging 48 rebounds a game. Celtics averaging 112. The opposition 102. So the Celtics winning their games by a plus 10. Well, rebounding was a weakness last year. It's become a strength this year for them. So uh, I'm, I'm surprised that they put it together this quickly. I thought it would take a little longer to make the adjustment. But... Uh, they're playing as well as any team in the league at the moment. All right, Malone winning the tap in Philadelphia controls, and here is perhaps the most underrated player in the league, in Maurice Cheeks. Now Andrew Tony, Ainge on him, and it's a charging call on Tony. Ainge using his quickness of uh, feet with a good lateral movement, uh, overplaying Tony to the right. Tony went left, and he was still able to square himself off and get the position on it for the charge. Maxwell to the hoop against Ivoroni. Bird, the offensive rebound, but it's to the hands of Julius Irving. Intercepted by Maxwell. Lead pass for Ainge. Two. Celtics take the lead at 2 nothing. Fine pass by Max. He had to hang it up and let Ainge run under it, and that's exactly what Danny did. Beautiful. All right, Philadelphia on the offense. Andrew Tony around the Malone pick. Tony on the miss. Ivoroni has done a good job for them at the power forward, getting the rebound, and Philly gets a fresh 24 seconds. Ivoroni's a fine player. Exactly what Philly needed, really, in terms of defense and rebounding. Doesn't look for shooting opportunities, and I'll tell you, with Malone, Tony, and Jay in there, who all have to get, you know, 18 to 20 shots a game, uh, it helps he complements the other three completely as long as he plays the good day and does his job on the boards. Foul was on Danny Ainge, his first, the Celtics first. Two shots for Julius Irving. Coming into the game, the doctors averaging 21 points a game, six and a half rebounds, four assists. Shooting, as you see, 75.8% from the foul line. Ties the game at two. Malone in the hole also makes it more difficult for the Celtics to double up on Jay. They were doing that pretty consistently the last year or two. Uh, now with Tony, Jay, and... Uh, Maxwell rejected. Oh. Bird left-handed. Little accidental offense there, but it still counts for two. Cheeks with Buckner on him. Ainge is on Tony. Maxwell, you see, guarding Irving. Julius to the basket oh. over Robert Barrett. 4-4. Four, four. Bird, who's just been on a tear, averaging nearly 25 points a game. And the rebound to Malone. Oh, Cheeks right around Bird. Beautiful. Oh, he's a fine, fine player. Yes, he is. Uh, talk about complimenting the other players. Uh, Mo Cheeks does it about as well. Leading the league, I believe, in assists. And uh, he's got two or three guys to feed this year. Ainge on the baseline taking Tony inside and he is called for stepping out of bounds. No. Uh, he hooked him. Goal for an offensive foul. He gave him an inside yep. fake and then hooked him to go outside and uh, Wally Rooney on top of the play. Ainge a second. Offensive foul, however, does not count as a team foul. Celtics have one team foul. Philadelphia has none. We have 9.45 to play in the first quarter. Six to four, Philly. Cheeks kicking it inside to Malone. Big Moses to the hoop. Malone, 6'10", 255 pounds, 27 See, years old. Normally, we're always talking about not giving away the inside position. In Malone's case, you really have to play behind him because if you play in front, that's going to open up the path to the basket. Buckner from outside. It's going to allow him to go to the offensive board, which he does so well. He's yeah. got 118 offensive yeah, rebounds. Averaging that's, six again. Yeah, that's more than... than well, let me tell you. Just to keep that in perspective, uh, Irving 
Jay is second on a team with, I believe, 52 offensive rebounds. So that'll give you an idea how effective that guy is off the board. So you can't play in front of him uh, inside. You've got to get behind him. Parrish on the rebound of Irving's missed shot. The Celtics push it up. Just under nine minutes. Intercepted by Irving. Just under nine to go in the quarter. 8-6 Philly. Three on one. They don't get it. Cheeks the rebound, though. Loose ball. Maxwell. Bird on the pull-up. Parrish. Had the ball ripped out of his hands, and it went off of Mochi. Good hustle by Buckner there in the pack. Quick hands got him uh, the ball eventually, or got him to uh, let Philly knock it out of bounds. Selleck threw it away 27 times in Philadelphia in the first game, Gil, and they obviously can't afford to do that tonight. Haynes changed his mind in midair when he saw he was going to get blocked and got a pass off underneath, but it didn't work for anything. So Philly will put it in play. Cheeks to Ivoroni. Uh, Mark Ivoroni, by the way, is 6'10", 225 from Virginia. Played at Italy for three years. Go ahead, Bob. I was going to say, we've said so often over the years, never to go up in the air to shoot. Yes. Know, uh, excuse me, to pass. Go up in the air to shoot. Once you get up there, then you leave your feet. Uh, if all of a sudden the offensive man, as he did that time, your intended target turns and looks away, you know, you're going to come up generally with a violation. Foul was called on Larry Bird as you look at it again. Here it is. Tony finds a hole uh, between Bird and Ainge, steps through it, creates a lot of contact, one shot foul, only the second team and the first on Bird. Right now it's eight to six Philadelphia with eight minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Pair of heavyweights feeling each other out in the early going. Ivoroni leaning on Bird, Bird leaning on Ivoroni. Ball in the middle is stolen, a foul was called. Bird nearly threw it in from the other foul line. The foul is called on Ainge. That's well, his third. There it is again. Same move, the long loping slide, trying to find the opening between the white shirts. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's the guy, obviously, who creates the contact. Uh, I think it just depends on who you're rooting for. That's how you feel that foul should be called. Ivoroni takes it in strong. Malone got a hand on it, but it's to Buckner. Three on three, the wingman off to Bird, and Bird hits the deck as he and Irving got tangled up. Oh, Bird went down hard, so did Julius. They're both all right. Right now, Bob, uh, 7.49 to go in the quarter. The foul was called on Maurice Cheeks, and Larry Bird will go to the foul line. Right now, both of these teams, well, sort of like a 45 RPM record that's playing at 33 and a third. I was going to say, they're kind of feeling each other out. If you recall the first game in Philadelphia, I think they hold each other, you know, with such respect that it makes them a little conservative, mm -hmm. uh, at least at the outset of the game. Philadelphia was not an artistic success, if you recall. I mentioned Boston threw it away 27 times. Philadelphia threw it away 30 times. So uh, I think they're kind of testing the waters at the moment. Cheeks. Now this is Ivoroni, a man who worked hard playing in the Italian League to get back to the NBA. Malone on the miss and Bird the rebound. Ahead to Buckner. Celtics a three on one on the wing is Parrish and the Celtics lead. Well, I'll tell you, Robert is still hampered with that ankle. He should have brought that in. You notice he shied away from bringing it in and took a little jumper. So he's still uh, playing on a tender ankle. The miss by Ivoroni, and we're going to get a foul. This will be the fourth team foul on the Celtics here in the first quarter. Rooney calls it on Larry Bird, his second personal. If you look at it, Bird the not. fourth. The Celtics at the limit. Malone muscling in for two. Uh, well, quick pass and uh, caught Robert Parrish by surprise. Oh, it's a 10-10 game right now. Maxwell, nice pass to Buckner, missed the shot. Malone and uh, Buckner got tangled up. Irving, nice feed to Cheeks. Philly leads 12-10. Good job. You've got to be careful on that quick pass. The defense has got to make that quick transition now, especially out of bounds, because the official simply has to handle. He doesn't, you know, wait for the defense to get set. So uh, that time Philadelphia took advantage of it, that last hoop down floor, and just caught Robert by surprise. Bird. Oh, pretty move by Larry Bird, switching off to the left hand. He just walked it through the pack, didn't he? Beautiful. This is the Celtics' 89th consecutive Boston Garden sellout. Irving sneaking in. The 
If you're going to go for the steal when you're guarding Jay, you better get a hand on it, I'll tell you. Because if not, <laughs> his quickness immediately allows him to respond and generally bring him into the basket. Bird cranking up from outside to tie the game at 14. Six minutes to play. First quarter, we're tied at 14 apiece. There's a look at Bill Fitch. On the other end, Cunningham with the same kind of look on his face. Cheeks from outside. Parrish tipping and controlling. Loose ball foul on Moses Malone. The crowd gives Jim Capers a Bronx cheer. And timeout is called. So we've played six minutes plus a few seconds. Five minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the first quarter. It's 14 apiece. This telecast is presented by authority of the Boston Celtics and WBZ TV Sports. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Boston Celtics Basketball Club, WBZ TV is prohibited. Celtics and Sixers tied at 14 apiece. They double up on Buckner, loses the ball. Malone, the lob pass over Joseph. They say he's been throwing that outlet and long court pass very effectively, but uh, obviously he rushed that one a little bit. Threw it too high and, uh, and of course, too long. Iveron, even if he caught up with it, would have been out of bounds. Bird Celtics high scorer with eight points so far. Make it ten. Larry Bird puffs one in. Celtics lead 16 to 14. Tempo starting to just uh, pick up a little bit with there. Boston shooting well. That's seven from a. 11 from the field now. Philadelphia. Ball out of bounds. Uh, the, uh, the Celtics. Yeah, another swan dive. That time he didn't pick up the foul, but Philadelphia's keeping it. Uh, Philadelphia 6 for 14 from the field. So they're not shooting well, but they've taken four more shots, which uh, is significant early on here. Yeah. Buckner now guarding Tony as they switch. They had Ainge on him before. Buckner on the miss. Uh, Ainge, uh, uh, Tony on the miss. Buckner pulls up. Good. Now, earlier in the game, Ainge was on Tony, picked up three quick fouls. So Bill Fitch has switched to Buckner on the Phillies shooting ace. Well, good job uh, there by Buckner putting on the brakes when the defense fell back on the two wings and taking a little jumper himself. Bird the rebound off to Ainge. Celtics lead by four. Buckner pull up. Rebound by Parrish. Again. A heck of a job staying with that one. And Philadelphia grabs a timeout. In the space of about 35 seconds, the Celtics have scored four, six unanswered points. It's Boston 20, Philly 14. Bob Cousy at the Garden. The Celtics lead 20 to 14. Andrew Tony, Bobby Jones has checked in for Philly as he has replaced Mark Ivoroni. Moses Malone trying to go on Parrish. Blocked by Parrish. Picked up by Ainge and he is fouled by Clint Richardson who has just checked in for Philadelphia. A good job. We were talking earlier about having to play behind Moses because if you play in front you allow him a path to the basket. What you've got to do if you play behind him is obviously double up immediately because he does not pick out the free man well. And that's what the Celtics did that time. A little short by Bird. Andrew Tony with it. Celtics 9 of 16. Philly 6 of 17 right now. Jump shot is good for Tony. Basket counts and uh, he'll be to the line to shoot one. Celtics had been rebounding, out rebounding Philly 11 to 6 before that. Here's a look. That's a good job by Tony. He just brings Buckner to the baseline and jumps over him. Just that simple. Quinn is there with his hand up in his face. All oh, the classic defensive pose, but uh, that's not enough for Mr. Tony. Three-point play for Andrew Tony, and so it breaks the Celtics' run of six unanswered points and make it eight unanswered points because they had been down by two before they went on the run. So it's 20 to 17 Celtics, three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Ainge is wide open, does not get it. Parrish off the offensive board. A loose ball foul is called on Philly. On Moses Malone. I'll tell you, Robert is hurting on that leg. Uh, he's doing an exceptional job under the circumstances. He Moses is. is upset because Robert went over his back and they call the foul on him. All right, Quinn Buckner. Celtics lead is three. Ainge with Tony on it. Ainge takes it all away. Two. That's a tough move. 
great quickness for a man his size. That's why they were able to make that adjustment, by the way, starting at Tony. Yep. <laughs> uh, Tony shoves Bird. Bird was trying to hold him up. Well, well uh, <laughs> the boys are up a little higher than they might normally be for a game for this one, as we pointed out. And that technical on Cunningham by Jim Capers. So and things then, are heating up quickly. Evidently, the coaches are uh, and now up there pretty good, too. Malone, and one on Malone by Capers. He may get another one. He's got to be careful. Yes, one more, and he's out. Two, when you uh, take a rest in the locker room and send a check to the commissioner quickly for 250. So I don't think that would make much of a dent in Moses' uh, <laughs> bankroll. But, uh, Wouldn't make any dent at all. It, it would get the coach's attention, I'll tell you. All right, Bird makes the first technical free throw. Because <laughs> I can't imagine what could make a dent in the guy's bankroll. Larry Bird, they hit the two technical free throws. The Celtics now lead by seven. 24-17, three minutes, 10 seconds to play. First quarter, as emotions are starting to run a little high here at the Garden. Obviously, the feeling between these two teams hasn't changed since last year. Good call yes. by Waller Rooney outside. Quinn Buckner with the quick shuffling of the feet. Just under three minutes to go in the quarter. The Celtics are up 24-17. Tony Richardson, Jones, Irving, and Malone for Philly. Buckner, Ainge, Parrish, Maxwell, and Bird for the Celtics. Irving to the hip. Misses the shot. Malone, that's what he does. Offensive rebound. I think they made Moses mad, I'll tell you. That was a good effort by Jay getting it in there. Buckner wasn't able to kiss it off the glass. Moses, the outlet. Got Jones on the wing. Whoa. Started that one from the foul line. Is that pretty? A quick four points by the Sixers, and it's 24-21. 2.20 to go in the quarter. I'll tell you, Moses and Jay have complimented each other extremely well. I really didn't think Moses would could do some of the things. You know, he's in the top ten in shots blocked this year for the first time. Nice Good move swing of the, the ball. ball. Parrish. Okay, for a man with a bad ankle, he's working hard. And he's called for steps. As he started to make the pivot move to his left, he, he thought, dragged the foot. Yeah, he thought Moses was to the outside. I think if he had gone through me, with he thought it, he was to the hoop. inside, and he went to the middle, and he had a clear yeah. path. Moses was, was on the other side. All right, Tony. You see Buckner playing him tight. Malone has the double immediately on Moses, forcing him to throw back. They're going to gamble on Bobby Jones or Clint. Richardson probably they can't they've got to be careful who they bird. drop off of. oh. that brings them up Larry Bird on a stop 26-21 14, 14 points for Bird blocking foul on Buckner that'll be three on Buckner uh, check it that'll be two on Buckner okay three on eight pretty tough to All keep right. uh, keep people out of foul trouble when they got Tony because he is so offensive minded and he's constantly making the move to the basket as we've said you know he he looks to create contact uh, because he's so strong and goes up so well with the ball that he feels it works in his favor in other words, he can absorb the physical contact mm -hmm. and still generally make the shot so well, he's strong he's six oh, yeah. a solid well, 190 pounds as you look at it Excellent free throw shooter. You see his percentage near, nearly 85%. Yeah. A lot of guys, you know, the slightest physical impact will throw their shot off. Yeah. Tony actually looks to create the contact uh, so that he can get three instead of two. He feels that confident in getting it off. Bird, I mean, the Ainge rather around. Parrish! Wow. Line drive, jump, sky hook on the offensive rebound. I tell you, I'm impressed with Robert's effort. Uh, believe me, Tony from outside. Got to find him early for a lot of obvious reasons. A minute to go in the first quarter. The Celtics lead by three, 28-25. They go to the Chief. The turnaround. Two more. I Harris playing a superb game. Started to say a moment ago. Take my word for it. Robert is hurting. He is walking very gingerly on that ankle. There's no question. He's not comfortable. Offensive. That time, Quinn got in the way. He, he made that quick move. The, first, the same move we saw Danny Ainge make on him early on. Quick lateral movement. 
Play defense with the feet, boys, not with the hands. That time, Quint used the feet and Tony used the hands. And it's Tony's foul, his second. Right now, Robert Parrish has eight points and eight rebounds. Number 14 you see on your picture right now is Franklin Edwards, who's checked in for the Philly 76ers, replacing Tony, who went out. Pass went astray. Irving. This is Edwards. He can fill it up. From Cleveland State, played with Darren Tillis in school. 18 seconds to go in the quarter now. Philadelphia plays for the final shot. The Celtics are leading 30 to 25. Edwards has not had much playing time, about two or three hundred minutes, but uh, he can shoot it second year. Richardson in low to Malone. Uh, they get the two. The Celtics have time. Three seconds. Ainge a three point shot. No good. And that's the end of the first quarter. Started a little on the slow side and then really started to pick up steam. After one quarter of play at the Garden, it's the Celtics 30. Philadelphia, 27. BZTV's contractual arrangements with the Boston Celtics for this telecast, the announcers for this game have been selected by station WBZ-TV, subject to the approval of the Boston Celtics Club. Gil Santos and Bob Cousy back at the Boston Garden after one quarter, very well played first quarter. It's the Celtics by three, 30 to 27. Larry Bird, 14 points, four rebounds. Robert Parrish, eight points, eight rebounds. For the Sixers, Irving and Malone with eight points apiece. Malone at four rebounds. The Celtics were 13 of 25, 52%. The Sixers, 11 of 23, 48%. Six Boston turnovers, three for Philly. So the Celtics ended up getting two more shots in the quarter, Bob. That's fine. Uh, what they've got to do also is get to the line more often. In the Philadelphia game, double overtime one by four, Philadelphia out took 16 more free throws than they did from the line, which, you know, that indicates that, that Philadelphia is bringing it to the basket very well. Moses will pick up fouls. Jay will, and so will Tony. Celics have got to match that uh, production. Irving knocking it out of Bird's hands from behind. The Sixers on the break. Jones to Malone through the middle. All right, on the floor right now for Philadelphia as they cut the Celtic lead to a point, we have Edwards and Richards in the guards, Malone in the middle, while the forwards are Irving and Bobby Jones. The Celtics have Archibald and Bradley at the guards, Parrish in the middle, Bird and McHale up front. Buckner and Ainge did a good job while they were in there as the starting guards. Bird from downtown. Bill Fitch saying it was a three-point shot, and I agree, and it's a technical foul called in Bill Fitch. Look, we have a replay on that, but let's take a look if we have. Bill Fitch really steaming as he claims Larry Bird's shot was a three-pointer. Jim Capers nailed him with a technical. That's the third technical foul we've had already called in the game. Two against Philly, one against the Celtics. Edwards shooting at the line. 82% free throw shooter. Nice good shooter. So it's 32 to 30. Apparently we don't have the uh, replay of the Bird basket. All right, so Philadelphia will put the ball in play. Bobby Jones. Once they've called the first one on the opposing coach, <laughs> you've got to be very careful. Steal by Bradley, restolen by Richardson. And no, offensive foul. Uh, run that by me again, Robert. Go ahead. No, I say, uh, you know, that they...